Hello, my name is Matt and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the UK's role in creating and launching satellites. It's an exciting time for space exploration. You may have seen last year's SpaceX launch or the Perseverance rover landing on Mars this year. But did you know that the UK is a world leader in satellite construction, building one out of four of all of the satellites launched worldwide? But at the moment, we can't launch these satellites from here in the UK. This is something that the UK Space Agency wants to change. And in order to do this, we'll need a spaceport. But what is a spaceport? A spaceport is very similar to an airport, except instead of planes taking off and landing, we'll have rockets blasting off into space. But we can't just build spaceports anywhere. There are lots of factors that the UK Space Agency has to keep in mind when deciding on a location. If we look at a map of the UK and highlight the major cities, we can see places where lots of people live. We don't want to put our spaceports here though, because if something went wrong in a city, then an unlucky person could end up with a rocket in their living room. Could you imagine launching a rocket right here in the centre of Birmingham? We also don't want our spaceports to be too difficult to reach though, so we'll need to look at the major roads and railways. We need to be close enough to transport links so that staff and supplies can make it to work. And finally, let's have a look at the location of some existing runways, ones which are quite large but maybe aren't getting much use. By reusing these runways, the UK Space Agency can save money and time. After looking at all these criteria, they've decided on these potential locations. But some of these symbols look like normal rockets, but others look more like aeroplanes. What's that all about? The two different symbols relate to two different kinds of launch. The rocket symbol is a regular vertical launch. This is the kind of launch you've probably seen on TV, the kind that took astronauts to the moon. The aeroplane symbol is a horizontal launch. This is a bit unusual, but it might be used lots more in the future. The rocket takes off and starts flying like an aeroplane, but once it gets to a certain height, it switches to rocket engines. But how does a rocket actually launch? The basic principle of a rocket launch was set out by Sir Isaac Newton. His third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if the fuel pushes one way, the rocket will be pushed in the opposite direction with an equal amount of force. We can demonstrate this by using a balloon. If we release the air, the balloon will fly in the opposite direction. But rockets aren't powered by air. Rocket fuel contains many elements, including highly combustible hydrogen. Now, all fires require three things to ignite, fuel, oxygen, and heat. We call this the fire triangle. And now it's time for another demonstration. First, we pour liquid fuel into our bottle. We don't want the liquid though, we want the gas or vapour. Now, all we need to do is make it dark and add heat. We can clearly see the direction of the flame. The rocket is being pushed down into our table. And if we flip the whole experiment sideways, we can launch our rocket using our rocket fuel. Once a satellite is launched, it needs to be put into orbit. An orbit is where one object goes around another. For example, the Moon orbits the Earth. The Moon is a natural satellite though, and the satellites we're speaking about today are artificial. There are three main kinds of orbit. Low Earth orbit satellites are around 1,000 miles away from the Earth's surface. This includes the ISS. Polar orbit is similar to low Earth, except these satellites go up and over the poles of the Earth. Geostationary orbits are much further away and maintain the same speed as the Earth, appearing almost still in the night sky. Once the satellites are in space, how do they stay in place? Well, they must maintain a constant speed. Too slow and they'll plummet back down to Earth. Too fast and they'll simply fly off into space. Satellites play a key role in our day-to-day -day lives, as well as in various scientific fields. 
Some of their jobs include GPS, sat-nav, photographing space, TV channels, telephone networks, natural disaster monitoring, weather forecasting, land monitoring, space science, and monitoring the migration of penguins by looking at their poo. As you can see, we rely on satellites every day, and soon the UK will join in with launching them. The UK Space Agency needs another 30,000 people to be working with them by 2030. And that might just be somebody watching this video today. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about satellites and space. So thank you very much for listening and goodbye.